Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm very pleased to be here today. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, to welcome us here in the Chamber of Commerce. And believe me, uh, the Turkish Chamber of Commerce is well known. Well know why? Because, because of the dynamism, the energy and the development that we can, we can see in Turkey. And uh, it's quite appreciated. I'm always impressed when I come here by the level of professionalism and the level of uh, energy. Of course, we have ups and downs from the economical perspective here in the country, in Europe, in most of the countries in Europe and worldwide. Uh, but nevertheless, we can see that uh, there are strong transformation everywhere and you are leading this. So that's important. Um, I want to, to tell you about uh, the future of the industry of plastics. Um, I'm the president of EUPC. EUPC is the European Association covering um, 50,000 companies. Plastic industry in Europe is about 50,000 companies, 300 billion euros and two million people around the business of plastics. It's a big, it's a huge industry. But it's an industry in trouble for the moment. Why? First, because plastics has an emotional image and a bad perception from the citizens. Why? Because plastics has not to be found in the river, in the ocean, on the streets. Plastics has to stay in, in, in a circle, in a loop. And that's, that's an important thing. And it's frustrating because plastics uh, have a lot of benefits. A lot of benefits. And, and we need, of course, to explain on a rational way what are the benefits. So on one hand, the perception of plastics are emotional and uh, uh, from the citizen perspective sometimes associated with a bad uh, dimension. On the other hand, we have multiple regulation coming. Regulation about recycling, regulation about taxes, regulation about CO2. So for those reasons, we are in an industry starting a significant transformation. And when I say transformation, it's, it's really something uh, structural. Our business model will change because we will not continue to produce plastic products like we did in the past. So I want to address two important points. One is sustainability and the other one is circularity. Sustainability is about the carbon footprint. Carbon footprint of plastics are good. And that's a good news. I started this speech with the bad news. Bad news is the emotional bad perception of plastics and so many regulations coming. But the good news is that maybe the most important benefits of plastics is CO2 footprint. Yeah, of course, we have a CO2 impact. But when we compare it to other materials, in most of the cases, the performance from the carbon footprint impact of plastics products are better, are lower. And you explain it. Let's look at the full life cycle of the products. If we are able to recycle our products, our the plastics products, then we can significantly reduce the, the carbon footprint impact. And I believe for all of us here in the room, one of the key topics, the key challenges for us, for our kids and for the kids of our kids is about keeping global warming under control. If we want to keep global warming under control, we will need to find solution to decarbonate the economy. And from this perspective, plastic is not a problem, it's a part of the solution. I give you an example. I'm leading a family business company, 1 billion euro, uh, and 
one of our key products are window, PVC window uh, profiles and, 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 and products. PVC can be recycled up to seven times. And the lifetime of a window is about 30 years, 30 to 40 years. It means that by recycling properly windows, you can use a PVC product for 300 years. My God, 300 years. So it means that we can really change the game by having uh, more recycling into our products and by running it from, from the very scratch, from the, the design of our product up to the end of life of our product. So CO2 footprint is something very important. Then, it has been said, uh, taxonomy is happening. Taxonomy will be a, a, a significant game changer uh, in Europe. Why? Because at the end, and to make it simple, because it's a very complex set of um, uh, uh, regulations. Taxonomy will be about connecting and having a strong correlation between environmental performance of the companies, of the industrial companies, and access to finance and to credits. If you perform on the right way from the, from the environmental perspective, in other words, if you can have a good uh, carbon footprint performance, you will get access to loans and to lower credit rates in the future in Europe. If you don't have the right environmental perspective, if you have uh, too much of an impact from the, the CO2 perspective, you will not get access to those finance. So this will be a significant game changer and I can tell you something. In the next years, I believe in the next five years, we will switch slowly from a pure financial management of the companies to an extra financial uh, management of the companies. And by extra financial, I'm talking about environmental KPIs, environmental indicators related to recycling, water consumption, energy consumption, and obviously CO2 footprint. So those are very important points. So the first one is about sustainability. Sustainability is a, a big opportunity for the plastic industry. The second one is about circularity. Circularity is about, and again, this has been said uh, by both uh, President of the Chamber of Commerce and PAGEF, circularity is about, well, let's keep all the plastic products in a virtuous circle, in a loop. Don't leave them outside of the loop. It means we will need to collect properly, sort out the product. We will need to gather them, to recycle them, and then to introduce it again in, in the new products. Today, in Europe, in packaging, we have some regulation happening with mandatory recycling content. 10, 20, up to 30% tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, it's not in 10 years' time, it will be in two or three years' time, you will have regulation with recycling mandatory content for all the products, packaging, building and construction, automotive, medical, all the sectors. And this should be an average of 30%. Obviously, you will have products with higher rates expected, others with lower rates. One question. Do we have enough recycling products to get to this goal of 30% today? No, absolutely not. We are far from that. So it means that if we want to go through this direction, we will need to invest significantly in recycling, both chemical recycling and mechanical recycling, obviously, but we will need also to look on the way to innovate, to continue to produce quality products with higher recycling rates. We don't want to compromise on quality. We want to keep the same quality of our products, but with higher uh, recycling content. And from scratch, from the design of the products to the production, to the promotion and the, 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 the usage of the products, up to the recycling at the end of the life, we will need to have 
a, a very smart innovation in order to improve uh, the, the, the level of uh, recycling content in the products. 30% is a goal, but it's not the end of the game. At the end, we want to go to 50%, 60, 70, and, and, and even higher. Of course, it will depend on the products, but this is the way. This is a wave, and this is something we need to be prepared for. At the UPC level, as you can imagine, we have multiple contacts with the European Commission, with uh, the different uh, organizations, with uh, politicians. We, we want to, uh, to explain to them the benefits of the products on a rational basis, with scientific information, facts, figures. Uh, but, but again, plastics is an emotional topic, so we will need uh, really to, to, to have the right communication. But by having those contacts, we know what they are working on and what will be the future regulations. And from this perspective, we will have two to three years to adapt ourselves. From the industrial perspective, this is the time frame that we need to be prepared. So, sustainability, circularity, what, what can we do? Uh, I, I talk about innovation. I, I'm, I'm impressed to see how fast and how agile we can develop new ideas all along the value chain to work on, on better equipment, better machines, um, better schemes uh, to improve sorting of uh, plastics, all the different polymers. Uh, the way to introduce with eco design more recycling uh, in more recycling products in the finished goods. Um, so innovation is crucial. Collaboration along the value chain is another very important dimension. And here I want to mention something. One of our goal is to improve connection, collaboration from the supplier of plastics material up to the, the customers, including recyclers, converters, customers, schools, all everything, innovation center, everything related to the value chain. And this is not easy. But here, and that's something that I really want to say, PAGEF, you manage it. You do it. So what? The result is that you are stronger faster, more agile. And I think this is really an example. And believe me, I was really impressed by some of the visits that we had yesterday, and I was really pleased with that. And we will take something out of that, because this is very important to, be, to work together. You know, I, I, I like to say that the enemy is always outside, not inside. We have to work together along the value chain, because our industry, deserve uh, deserve innovation and, and deserve much a, a much better image that we have today but this is up to us to make it happen so in a nutshell I think we have we are in, in, in a significant uh, transformation because because of the image of plastics because of the regulation that will come and that will change significantly just the way to sell our products to our customers and to produce it. But we have very strong assets and, and, and interesting opportunities. By leveraging innovation, by leveraging collaboration, and maybe by communicating a bit more, uh, I'm sure that we can, we can develop things. And, and my last point will be about connection with uh, Turkey and Europe. This is something possible. This is really something that we work on. And uh, PAGEF is, is one of our important members around the table of EUPC of all the countries. By sharing practices, by developing things together, I'm sure that we will progress and, 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 and develop a more uh, sustainable uh, future. So thank you to, to all of you. And uh, we will now work on on the other topic about always keeping uh, plastics on the loop, but from the microplastics perspective.
Bernard. Thank you.